going to look at what is my moment of inertia and try to answer a problem related to moment of inertia. Now before you understand what moment of inertia is, we need to understand what is inertia itself. Now you might remember this from previous lessons, but I'm just going to go through inertia really quickly. Okay. So let's say you have an object, and let's say you apply some force to that object and you push it in some direction. Let's say that this object has high inertia, and what that means is that with that force, the object, the object is going to speed up relatively slowly. Okay. But if I say I had the object, and I apply the same force to it, same exact push, same exact force, but this time the object had a lower inertia. In that case, it's going to speed up a lot quicker. Okay. Now, if we're using fancy terms, what that means is that if I had that object, I apply the force, and the object has, let's say, for instance, that the object has a high inertia, it'll have a low acceleration, sorry, a low acceleration, and a lower, or in other words, a lower change in velocity. So it's not going to speed up as much, or as quickly, sorry. And let's say instead if I had a lower inertia and I apply the same force, it'll have a higher acceleration or greater change in velocity. There's another thing I need to mention here, and that is um, that is if I applied some force, I'm just going to go back, so if I had this object here and I applied a force to it and it had a lower inertia, ultimately its speed because it's accelerating so quickly, and let's say it accelerated for a few seconds, ultimately its speed is going to be a lot greater than if I had an object with a high inertia. Okay, So I'll say that again. If you have an object with a, high, a lower inertia, and um, I applied some force to it and made it accelerate, and I did that for a few seconds, its acceleration, its final speed is probably going to be less than if the object had a lower inertia. If you, you can think about it, for example, if I, you know, if I push this box along and I pushed along with some force and it had a high inertia, then and if I let it go, ignoring friction and all that, it's going to go at or its, its speed is going to ultimately be less than if it had a lower inertia. I hope that makes sense, but we'll go through the question. That should make even more sense. Another thing I need to mention is that this is not related to friction. Okay, Inertia and friction are two different things. If I took this whole experiment and I did it in space, the same conditions apply. Objects with high inertia will speed up slowly compared to objects with lower inertia. Even with the same force, it will speed up a lot faster. Okay. Now, that's inertia. Come back to moment of inertia. And what's the difference? It's basically all of that just done around in a rotational motion. So for instance, if I had a bottle, if I had a ball, sorry, tethered to this pole here, again ignoring friction and all air resistance or whatever, you want to think about this ball attached to this pole applied some force to it, it's going to go spinning around in this sort of a direction around that pole. If the object, the same conditions still apply, if the object has high inertia, some force applied, the object will accelerate slowly. And if I had the object with lower inertia, the same force object will accelerate a lot quickly. Okay, and then, like I said before, its final speed is probably going to be uh, larger or greater. But we'll come to that in the question. So basically, to summarize, moment of inertia and inertia are essentially the same thing, except one talks about motion around some kind of axis going around in a circle, whereas the other one talks about motion in a straight line. You might see these terms in textbooks, motion around a rotational axis and linear motion. They mean essentially the same thing. So before we come to the question, here's a quick summary. If you have a higher moment of inertia and the same force, you'll have a lower acceleration. Or if you have a lower moment of inertia 
and the same force, you'll have a higher acceleration. Now, coming to the question, um, which is basically which one of these statements is true. Going through, go through this uh, for a minute again, and pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer. So the answer is actually the first one. And the reason is because <coughs> if you decrease the moment of inertia, what you're doing is you're basically reducing its whatever objects um, we're talking about. Re re you're reducing its inertia, which means that some force, when you apply some force to that object, which is this, this situation here, Yep, this one here, the object has lower inertia, you apply some force to it, it'll have a higher acceleration, greater change in velocity, and this is what I was going to talk about before. Um, its velocity is basically increasing, so it's accelerating, but if you all keep all the conditions the same, all the, the situation is exactly the same between all four of these statements and all we're doing is just changing the moment of inertia that means we apply the same force we apply it for the same amount of time we accelerate things for the same amount of time what will happen is if you decrease the moment of inertia the force that you apply to that object is going to make it accelerate a lot quicker which means it's going to reach a higher velocity, which means it's going to increase its velocity. In this case, because we're talking about moment of inertia and not just inertia, it's going to increase its rotational velocity. Okay, that's it for this video. A few things we can talk about later. If you want to have a look at this, you can pause the video. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please let me know and I'll try and make another video.